Hey guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new here. I hope everybody's having a great day today, but if not, hopefully we can change that by the end of this video. Today's video is brought to you by you guys because I've actually received a lot of requests on this video topic lately and I absolutely love the idea. So I'm gonna be showing you guys a bunch of different hairstyles that I like to rock when my hair is dirty. Most of you guys know this about me, but in case you're new here, I do only wash my hair once a week, which means that my hair is definitely not fresh and clean every single day of the week. To say the least, I have a lot of days when my hair is very dirty, but I actually use that to my advantage to create some of my all-time favorite hairstyles. So greasy hair is definitely tricky to figure out how to work with to your benefit, but once you do, I'm telling you, you can create some beautiful looks. So I have a lot of different options here today, depending on what you're in the mood for. Some with my hair pulled back, I have actually three different jaw clip techniques that I'm going to be sharing, especially helpful if you have long hair like myself, because the jaw clip can be really tricky to figure out how to work with if you have long hair. And I also have some options with the hair down, which I feel like is the trickiest to make look good when your hair is greasy. So I wanted to make sure that I gave you guys a lot of different options and I cannot wait to jump into it. But before we do that, if you could make sure to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, click on that notification bell and drop a comment below letting me know if there is a certain way that you like to wear your hair when it's extra dirty. Thank you so much for doing all those things. It really helps to support me with the YouTube algorithm. Don't forget to click on the description box below to get everything you could possibly need from me, like my social media handles, merch, Lightroom preset filters for editing your Instagram photos, discount codes, links, timestamps. What else? That's it. Let's jump into it. Okay, so here is our starting point. We have some nice greasy roots going on. This is definitely not the greasiest I've ever been, but I mean, I'm not looking fresh and clean at the root. I don't think anyone would say that. So I am going to apply dry shampoo first. This is basically the first thing that I do no matter what type of look I'm trying to create because not only is that going to help to absorb the excess oil, it's also going to help to give me volume because when my hair is greasy, it starts to get weighed down and lie pretty flat and I basically lose any volume that I may have had before. So I will say that dry shampoo can work even better for you if you apply it before your hair gets to this point. But for the sake of the video, I really wanted to show you guys kind of what we were starting off with and how we're gonna use that to our advantage. So the dry shampoo that I'm going to use is the Redken Deep Clean Dry Shampoo. If you watch my dry shampoo showdown, then you know, you know the drill with this one. It is seriously incredible. If you haven't seen that video yet, I will list that below. But this is such a heavy duty, amazing dry shampoo. I cannot get enough of it. Okay, let's do this. So for dry shampoo application, I wouldn't say that I have any kind of special technique or secret to it. I apply it towards my roots up here on the crown of my head. And then I also apply apply it around my face right here because that's actually where I tend to get the greasiest. So I'll kind of lift up in through here and that's basically it. I'm not really getting back in here. I leave that be, but top of my head and then yeah, around my face. Okay, so the most simple and straightforward look by far is this low slicked pony. It's one of my all time favorite ways to wear my hair when it's dirty because I feel like it just looks extra sleek when you have that grease to help to slick things back. So you can rock this look with a side part, a middle part, a between side and middle part, which is what I'm rocking here. I cannot do a straight down middle part because I have a colic. It haunts me in my sleep, but that's a story for another time. So I have, yeah, kind of like a half side, half middle part going on. And I will just take all the hair around the front of my face and tuck it behind my ears and make sure that I am smoothing down this area. So if you need to go in with a brush to make sure that you don't have any bumps, do that because the point of this look is to look very nice and sleek and smooth and pulled together. You can use any kind of hair tie that you would like for this look. So of course, a scrunchie is an option. I've talked about these scrunchies so many times. They come in a set of three off of Amazon. They are nice and soft and they come in neutral colors, which you guys know I'm a sucker for. So I will make sure to list these below along with everything else that I talk about in this video. But my personal favorite hair tie for a low pony like this is actually something that is smaller and kind of is camouflaged in with the hair. Obviously not completely, but what I like to do for that is use a hosiery elastic that is close in color to my actual hair color because I think there's just something so sleek about that. So I am using a hosiery elastic here from Scoonshi. This one is kind of braided, a little bit thicker, and is in their kind of blonde color so that it kind of, like I said, is camouflaged in with my 
my hair even though of course you can see it. And that's basically all there is to it. It's a ponytail, like I said, very simple, not much else to talk about. I guess the last thing that I'll say is that I often like to pull the ponytail in front of my shoulder like this. I just think this is so pretty. Space the hair out, put it on display, but of course you don't have to do that. You can leave it tucked behind your shoulders to give that really sleek kind of tight look if that's what you would like. The last thing that I will mention, which is not just for this look, but any of the looks that we're gonna be creating is if you have flyaways, I would definitely recommend using a pomade. This one right here is from Way. It's called their matte pomade and I absolutely love it. It's so, so good. All you do is take a very, very tiny bit of it, rub it in between your fingers, and then you can use that to just kind of pat down on any areas that you have flyaways, and especially for a look like this that you want to be sleek, that can just really take us to the next level. Okay, next we have another kind of slicked back low moment, but instead of the ponytail, it is a bun. Okay, this is one of those looks that I feel like is just a lot easier to watch visually versus actually hearing it explained verbally, but I'm gonna try my best. So first you're gonna start off by pulling the ponytail off of your wrist and you'll kind of pull your hair through it almost like you would with a ponytail, but do this more slowly because you're not gonna pull it all the way through. Instead, you'll pull it about halfway through so that you still have hair hanging out at the bottom and you've kind of created this loop with the top of your ponytail. From here, you will grab that loop that you've created in the hand that also has the ponytail around it. And then with your free hand, you're going to grab that excess hair that's sitting at the bottom and twist it to the top. Then you'll take your free hand again and you'll pull that ponytail around the bun that you have now created. And that's it for the bun. So again, this is something that you can wear with a scrunchie, with a hosiery elastic, any kind of hair tie that you would like. You could also leave these kind of end pieces underneath the bun if you would like to, but I personally prefer the way that it looks with them on top. I think that it just adds something unique and really cute. So let's move on to the next one. Okay, next up we have this bubble pony right here. So I'm gonna be showing you guys the bubble pony in a low pony version, but you could do this mid height, high height, totally up to you and whatever you're in the mood for. So for this look, you'll probably need any wear between three and five ponytails. You can use any kind of ponytail that you would like, but just make sure that they are all the exact same ponytail so that it looks nice and cohesive. So again, you're gonna pull your hair behind your ears, slick in that low pony, and you will go ahead and tie your hair in the low pony in the exact same way that you would any other low pony. But then we are going to take it one step further, well actually three steps further, and add some ponytails down the rest of the length of the hair. So for the second ponytail, you'll just pull that a few inches down from the first one, go ahead and secure that around as normal. And now we have this kind of space in between the first and second pony, and that is where you're gonna create a little bubble. To do that, all you have to do is just pull the hair kind of apart, if that makes sense. And then you'll just go ahead and repeat that same exact process basically until you hit the end of your ponytail and you can't do it anymore. I do leave about one to two inches of hair out of the end of my ponytail whenever I do looks like this. You could do more if you would like to. There's really no rhyme or reason to that. And once you get to the end, if you feel like they're starting to look a little bit less bubbly, a little bit less poofy, all you have to do is continue to pull the hair apart and you can kind of adjust where these ponytails are. If you feel like you get to the end and they're a little bit uneven, one's a lot longer than the other, you can just kind of slide them around and make it work. And that's it for the bubble pony. It's such a fun look and I feel like it's a little bit deceiving because it seems like this would take a lot of time and effort, but you guys just saw in reality, it's very quick and easy to do. So if you wanna look like you spent time on your hair, but you don't actually have the time, the bubble pony is the way to go. All right, now it's finally time to whip out the jaw clip. So I'm gonna show you guys a few different ways that you can use a jaw clip, especially if you're somebody with longer hair. This is something that can be really tricky to kind of finagle. So I'll show you guys a few different options and hopefully one of these will work really well for you. Okay, so this first technique is all about twisting and tucking, which I promise will make a lot more sense when you actually see it visually. So here, set this up in the same way as a low ponytail, but you're gonna wanna take your dominant hand and have the back of your hand touching your neck and your palm grabbing onto the ponytail facing away from your neck. Then you are going to twist that hair up towards your head. Make sure that you are holding that twist really tightly towards the head. Otherwise, this is going to be really loose and the jaw will fall, the jaw, the jaw clip will fall out. Now we're holding our hair in our non-dominant hand and we have the ends of our hair flopping out on the top. So what we're gonna do here is grab onto that twist towards the very top of our head with our dominant hand and then continue to hold the ends of our hair in our non-dominant hand and pull it down towards that twist. 
Then from here, you'll take your fingers on your dominant hand and start to tuck underneath the twist as much as you possibly can. If you have pretty long hair like myself, then you will probably still have ends of your hair sticking out. So as much as you can here, try to tuck that underneath as well. But if you can't now, it's not the end of the world because we can adjust it once the clip is in. So now we're gonna go ahead and put that jaw clip in. What I would recommend is actually putting it up higher on your head than you think. For me, if I put it lower towards the base of my neck, then it will always tip forward because it's not properly secured at the top. So as you can see here, again, my ends have kind of fallen out. So now I can just kind of open up that jaw clip and tuck the ends back in and resecure it. And that's it for the first technique. Let's jump over to the second. Okay, for the next jaw clip technique, this one actually uses a ponytail. So you're gonna wanna go ahead and place your hair in a secure low ponytail. For this one, I like to make sure that the ponytail is the same color or a close color match to the jaw clip that I'm using so that it doesn't look like a weird kind of contrast. Then once you have your hair in that ponytail, you're going to want to create space up above where the ponytail is right in the center. So grab some hair with your right hand and your left hand, kind of pull that apart until you have a little hole there, if you will. Then you're going to grab the ends of your ponytail and start to pull that up through the hole. You don't need to do anything special as far as twisting it or pulling it at a certain angle, just straight up, and that's automatically going to make it so that there's less hair that you have to finagle with. Then you can go ahead and place your clip, and again, you'll probably have some ends of your hair sticking out. If that's the case, you can just kind of push them up into the jaw clip, readjust as needed, but that is another very easy way to kind of hack the system so that you can get long hair into that jaw clip. And then the last jaw clip technique is going to be for those of you that want that kind of traditional look that you can achieve when you have shorter to mid-length hair, but that's a lot more difficult to achieve with long hair, where you have the ends of your hair kind of fluffed up, out, and over the clip. The key to this technique is twisting your hair together. So what you're going to do is create two sections in your hair and start to just twist them around one another. Once you get to the end of your hair, you're gonna go ahead and twist and pull that up towards your head in the same way that we did for the first jaw clip technique. And then you can go ahead and secure that in place. From here, you'll probably just want to adjust your ends a little bit to make sure that they're kind of splayed out as evenly as possible all around your jaw clip. But creating those twists actually will kind of help to shorten your hair in a way so that you don't have as much hair flopping out as if you were to just pull it all up straight, not in that twist. So those are my three different jaw clip techniques. I would love to hear which of them works the best for you, which one you're most excited to try out. So let me know in the comments below. I would say the biggest key for me here, aside from actually doing those techniques, is using a jaw clip that is very long because there's a lot of different lengths and sizes. And if I use one that's shorter than the one that I'm using now, this just doesn't work because it's not long enough to hold all of my hair. So again, an Amazon find. I feel like everybody knows about these jaw clips at this point, but they're a must for me. Okay, so that's it for all the looks that I like to wear when my hair is down or pulled back in one way or another. So let's wrap up with a couple different looks that I like to rock when my hair is actually down. The first of those looks is something that I wear all the time on my channel. It's kind of beachy, undone, mermaidy waves. And I think that it's so, so pretty, but it is something that takes just a little bit more time because you actually have to set it up the night before, but it still is pretty easy. The very first step in this whole process is also the most important for me in making sure that I get really defined waves and also longer lasting waves because if I don't do this, then my hair will fall pretty quickly since my hair is naturally straight and not wavy. And the waves just, they won't have that mermaid kind of look, you know, they'll be a lot looser. So that step is to make sure that I'm getting my hair really damp the night before with any sort of leave-in conditioning spray. Anything goes, one that I've been reaching for a lot lately that I really enjoy is from AG Hair Care. It's just called their conditioning mist. But basically I will just section off my hair and make sure that I'm getting it completely damp on every single section. Make sure you don't have any chunks that are dry because then those waves will not look I don't want to say uniform because we don't want this to look completely the same, but there will be a big difference in waves that are damp versus those that are not. Then after that, we're going to go ahead and create twists in our hair. Keyword here is twist and not braid. I find that if I create braids, it's just a little bit too tight and crimpy, and I want this to look more like waves instead of tight crimps. So depending on how wavy you want your hair to look, you can either just create one twist with all of your hair or what I personally like to do is create two twists, one on each side of my head. This is super, super easy to do, so I'll just demonstrate on one side of my head. So on the right side of my face, I am sectioning my hair into two different sections, and I am just going to twist these pieces around one another. Again, at this point, my hair is already completely damp. 
So I'll just go all the way down to the bottom, secure with a hosiery elastic like this. And there you have it. So then I'll do that on the other side as well. And then I will go ahead and sleep in that look. And then once I wake up in the morning and take these out, my hair is looking how it looks right now, but we're not done. So you could totally just leave it like this if you would like to, but how I kind of achieve that slightly undone beachier look is by going in with both a texture spray and some sort of oil or serum. The texturizing spray is going to help to give my hair extra body and definition and give it that kind of tousled look, but then when I have the oil or serum, that will add some shine back in. I'm gonna go in with the Bumble and Bumble Surf Infusion Oil and Salt Infused Spray. This is a great option for anyone that doesn't want to buy two separate products if you just want this to be a one and done thing and quicker and easier then this is definitely something that I would recommend I absolutely love this product so I will just go ahead and mist this all over the ends of my hair and when I am doing that as you can see I'm just kind of scrunching it up and it's gonna look a little bit messier at first but we will brush through this at the end so don't worry about that Okay, now I'm just gonna take my brush and not brush all the way through, but just kind of lightly over that top layer that got a little crazy in that process. I have these shorter layers around my face that I am trying to grow out, but they're just this weird length right now where I feel like it just doesn't really mesh with the rest of my hair. So what I will typically do is pull these away from my face and I'll show you guys a couple different things that I like to do here. This is where I introduce these little mini jaw clips right here. You guys probably recognize these because I wear them all the time, especially when I have this kind of waved look going on. You could also just use a bobby pin if you don't want to use a little jaw clip, but I think they're super cute. So one option is just to keep the hair kind of straight and sleek like this and to just clip it at the very back. So I'll just keep it like that pull it towards the back and then you guys can probably see just secure it right there and then I will just do the same exact thing on this side so that is option number one option number two takes just slightly more effort and that is to create little twists with these front pieces so I will grab that same amount of hair and then I will just twist my hair away from my face. You could twist it towards if you like, but I like this look better. And then I will twist all the way to the end of that piece, wrap it around in the back and secure it again with that little clip. This is my personal favorite, which you guys probably know because I wear this literally all the time, but I feel like the twist makes it look extra mermaidy, which is why I love it so much. And then the last one is going to be for those of you that want a 90s kind of early 2000s moment and you want the jaw clips up and on display. So here I am just going to take the same amount of hair, but instead of working with it all the way to the end of that layer, I'm actually gonna stop it mm, couple inches in and then put the jaw clip right there. You could also twist these pieces if you would like, but not necessary. Oh my gosh, I think it's so cute, but I know not everybody is into this kind of thing. So that is the third way that I like to kind of deal with those layers when I have the mermaid look. And then the last and final look is definitely the one that takes the most effort, but the reward for that is that it looks the best and that is doing some sort of overnight heatless curl. My favorite way to do an overnight curl is with the Octo Curl and I actually already have an entire video where I show you guys how I use this, little hacks with it so that you can kind of manipulate it to get different sorts of curls. So if you haven't seen that video yet, I'm gonna list that below and I'm not gonna walk through it in this video since I've already done that been there done that but i would definitely recommend checking out the octo curl i've tried a lot of different options for heatless curls like rope tie curls and other things that are kind of like this but here how would i do this it's like it has just one oh my gosh basically just one of these strips on either side of my head and you just don't get anywhere near the level of curl that you get with the Octo Curl. So this, oh my gosh, is one of my favorite things ever. It does take just a little bit more time the night before, but it's totally worth it in my opinion because the curls that you end up getting are absolutely beautiful. All right, you guys, that is the last hairstyle that I wanted to walk through, which means that we have made it to the end of this video. I really hope that you enjoyed hanging out with me today and that you found this helpful. I would love to hear in the comments below which of these looks you are most excited to try out for yourself. If there's more than one, let me know. And of course, as always, everything 
everything, like I said, will be listed in my description box below in order of mention. So it's nice and organized and easy for you to find. If you enjoyed this video, you know the drill. Please don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, click on that notification bell and send my channel to a friend. Thank you so much for doing all of those things. It really helps to support me. I appreciate you so, so much. Stay tuned for my next video because that will be up in a few days, but until then, I hope you have a great few days.